Fear Not, Episode 39. Hi, I'm Billy Atwell, and I believe that consistently facing your fears is the only way to realize your truest self and to make those confident choices that will help you to obtain your deepest held hopes and dreams. I have faith that this podcast series will show you that you are not alone, that it will strengthen you and give you courage to face your fears, and that it will help you to permanently cross over into a life of living beyond your fears. Join me on this journey as we listen and learn from others as they share their experiences in facing and overcoming their own fears. Hey, everybody. Today, you and I are going to be joined by Mark Lamaster. Hey, Mark, how are you? I am great. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Mark is the author of Friday Night Lights for Fathers and Sons and the founder of Playoff Parenting. He's also the chief dad developer at Playoff Parenting University, which is an online coaching program that helps dads transform their relationships with their children. Mark is also a certified John Maxwell coach, teacher, and speaker. Mark helps connect dads to what matters most. Mark believes that every dad has the potential to be the best dad for each of his children. Through his book, coaching programs, and speaking engagements, Mark has helped many dads pursue the father-child relationships they have always dreamed of. Mark, can you take a few minutes to fill in the gaps and maybe also give us a brief glimpse of your personal life? Yeah, I'd love to. So my journey started, let's see, 13 years ago when I my daughter was born. And, uh, two years after that, I had a, uh, my wife and I had a son. And, uh, so now my daughter is 13 and my son is 11 and my wife and I have been married for 18 years going on 19 here. And we just have, you know, experienced life as parents and it, and it completely changed, uh, the day that our daughter was born. So, uh, we were married for five years before that and, and kind of had, Uh, got to know each other really well in those five years, did a lot of traveling and those kinds of things. And then when we decided to have kids, um, it just, it just, uh, changed our life for the better. And we always think of what were we doing for those five years before? So it's been just a, a, a wonderful journey with, with kids. And we've learned so much as parents and, uh, it was just, um, one of those things as far as with, uh, with parenting, uh, that I at some point just needed some help. Like what, where am I supposed to go to get help with parenting? Cause there's not that guidebook or that help book for how to raise a kid. Um, there's, so th- the, the journey kind of started there with me and, um, let's see, as far as my background, I have about 20 years as a, a registered nurse and a lot of the ad- adrenaline type things in the background. So what I did was I did, uh, emergency room nursing, recovery room and surgical nursing. I did flight nursing for several years. And then I went back to school to get my edu- uh, uh, master's degree in nursing and did some nursing education specialist roles for the last few years of my career in nursing. So lots of experience in the medical background. And now I love helping out parents, especially dads. That sounds cool. And thank you so much for sharing. Mark, would you also share with us one of the biggest fears that you've had to face? One of the biggest fears that for me has been, am I going to be a good enough dad? Am I going to be the dad that my kids need? And I'm not talking about being a perfect dad. I'm just talking about being the dad that um, I was designed and created to be and the dad that I dreamed of becoming before we had kids. And then just being able to provide, not um, provide for my kids what they need to learn before they turn 18 and go off to school and and um, start living their own lives with, uh, you know, if they get married and with their jobs and those kinds of things. So it's really a that that fear for me is, am I going to be a good enough dad? Am I going to be the dad that my kids need? So what did you do to face and overcome that fear? Well, I first of all panicked. Uh, I did. I just was like, oh, I just won't do anything. I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. And that was just easy. And and so I almost got – was almost kind of paralyzed. Like I'm just going to do what I'm doing. I'm going to go to work. I'm going to make money. I'm going to 
provide for them financially. And then I started thinking of right around this time that my son was eight, that's when it really hit me was I have 10 years left with him before he goes to school or military or gets a job or whatever he ends up doing. And so it really kicked in for me then. And I decided, you know what, the, the best thing for me to do is to go read books. So I went and read about every parent, every parenting book, dad book that I could and found that much like everything else, if you have, if you read a book about how to save money and get out of debt, um, it's great that you have the head knowledge to do it, but if you don't actually take action, nothing changes. Or if you want to lose some weight, you, you read diet books, but if you keep eating the same foods and don't exercise, you don't lose the weight. And so then I said, you know what, I, I figured it out that I, I really needed to change what I was doing. So I needed to, to do something and take action. And that's when I got the idea that I could teach him things while we were doing activities together, activities that he liked to do. Not necessarily that I liked to do, but I wanted to get into his world and to understand what he was doing. So when I started taking action, that's when things really turned around for me. Would you also say that this taking action is how you approach fear in general? For me, I really like to do research before I get into something. So if if I want to face fear, I'm going to find out what I need to know, like how to approach it. Um, and then once I am comfortable with it, then I can take that action. So, and, and, and if it's like an instant fear, how do I respond to it? Um, I, you know, I've obviously base it off of my experience and I'm thinking of my nursing career. Like if I was, a, if I was fearful of how am I going to take care of this critical patient, I would just rely on my experience, but I had studied and researched and, you know, trained to do that. Um, but as a parent, for me, it was, I really need to understand what it is to be a parent. So I would, you know, just reading books and then talking to other parents and my parents helped me significantly. So I think that's how I would normally approach fear. So on this journey, and it sounds like you've done a lot of research, you must have come across a lot of resources, some really great material. Would you mind sharing some of that with us? Yeah, that'd be great. I, um, I, I look back to the first book that I had on parenting. It was a book that my dad gave me when I became a dad. And I really believe in, you know, in talking to him, it was more of kind of a passing on of a resource because it was an older book from the seventies. And, but it was cool to see what my dad was reading about when he had his own children. He had me and what he, what he had for options. And there was probably about five books back then, literally. And so I would, I literally did this search on Amazon to find how parenting books, uh, boys and dad books, like dads and boys and dads and sons. And then I uh, looked dads, sons and Christianity. And that, that list of books was under a hundred. And once I started really cueing into what the Bible talks about parenting and being a father more specifically, and then applying that to the, the scientific and scientific research, and I was able to take action that that's where things clicked for me. So, um, some of the, some of the people that stand out to me, um, in the research of fathers and father and son is Dr. Dobson, um, Dr. Um, let's see, Dr. Meg Meeker is a fantastic author. She's a family physician that does, um, she wrote, uh, strong fathers, strong daughters. Um, she wrote a book about, um, um, let boys, uh, raising boys. I think it was called, um, let boys be boys or something to that effect. And that's not the right title. I'd have to check on that. But, uh, Steve Farrar is another author that I really went to because he was able to take, the, the biblical principles of fatherhood and put them into what it, what I need to do as a dad. And that, that book, um, he's got several, but that book that I'm thinking of is called point man. And, uh, so those are some of the areas that I go to. And then there's just the research. The national father Institute is an excellent resource for, for, um, fatherhood statistics. And then also some Barna research um, where I get some of my, uh, up to date statistics. Are you ready for the speed run? Yes, sir. Let's do it. What person that's either fiction or real has made the most impact on your life, Mark? 
it's going to be my parents and my dad, as far as modeling what it means to be a man and to be a father. And then there's some, my mom, um, just has this saying that, um, she has a bit more of an entrepreneurial spirit like I do. And I think that's where I get it from. And she would always tell us as we were growing up, she would say, if you want that balloon, you got to go get it. Otherwise it's going to fly away. And that is that action piece that I, that I always was looking for that I needed. And I've always continued to kind of go back to that phrase because if you don't at least try for something, you'll never get it. If you don't apply for a job, you don't get it. If you don't try to connect on a deeper level with your kids, it's not going to happen. So that, that phrase for my mom just stands out to me. And, um, so the, my parents have made a huge impact on me as, as a person. If you could instantly change one thing in the world, what's it going to be? This would go back to the research that I'm doing. Um, the online world, even though it benefits everybody greatly, but I would love to somehow, and this is going to be controversial, but I'm going to say I would get rid of Facebook. And there's several reasons for that, but you'll have to read my next book to find out about that. But I would definitely get, I would, that would be what I would do. What's your biggest weakness? My biggest weakness is feeling that it, um, it's probably my fear of not being the dad that I want to be and not being good enough. What's your biggest strength? My biggest strength is that I, I'm always looking to try new things and to become better and to become the, the parent and the dad that I, that, I want, that I want to be for my kids and the husband that I want to be for my wife. If you could only have one book to read, what book would that be? Wow. Um, this, is, this, is, this is a tough one for me. Oh, man. Let's see here. I would say for me that um, if I had one book that I could just keep reading over and over again um, that just, just speaks to me, and this this wouldn't be the Bible. I would that would be it. But I want to be a little bit different than that. Um, I would say I could read I could read Point Man over and over again because it just shows me it points me in the right direction of who I need to be. Do you have a favorite sound? Favorite sound is a a golf ball going in the cup. The sound that that makes. And Mark, if someone wants to connect with you, what's the best way for them to do that? The best way to, to connect with me is at my website, which is marklamaster.com. That's M-A-R-K-L-A-M-A-S-T-E-R.com. And you can get a hold of me through that. That's probably the best way. I'm also on Facebook, but uh, and I just said I'd get rid of that, so that doesn't make any sense. But um, my website's the best place to go. What parting advice would you like to leave with us today? I would say this message goes to to parents, but especially dads, you have been gifted with all the skills, all the, all the talents that you need to um, provide for your kids. And that doesn't mean that's just going to naturally happen. You have to work at it. And there's nothing better than to developing that relationship with your kids now, because it will impact not just your grandkids, but future, future generations after that. Well, thank you so much for that, Mark. And I want to let everyone also know, too, that Mark has generously donated a copy of his book to be given away. So if you would like an opportunity to win, go to the giveaways page at livingbeyondyourfears.com to submit your free entry form today. And Mark, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show today. You've been really generous with your time and your knowledge, and it's just been really great to talk to you. Thank you so much, Billy. I really appreciate it. And just uh, thank you to all your listeners uh, that, that tune in as well. Thank you for joining me today. And remember, you cannot achieve everything, but you do have the God-given ability to achieve anything. So stay focused, out of fear, and keep on keeping on. Until next time, be well and peaceful. For more information on today's episode and guest, or for resources that will assist you in overcoming your fears, visit livingbeyondyourfears.com. And don't forget to subscribe to this podcast, where three times a week we move to a light beyond our fears. 